Hello everybody, it is Sukasa, and welcome back to my Minecraft Let's Play with Feed the Beast using the Unleashed Mod Pack. So last time I showed you all how to make this huge and awesome multi-block structure from Tinker's Construct called the Smeltery. With it, we'll be able to melt down our ores into this liquid molten metal that we can pour out into casts to make our metal tool pieces for the Tinker's Construct items. And uh, that's what I'm going to show you all how to do today. We couldn't do it last time because it didn't have the lava that's necessary to power this thing with. But I'd just gotten back from a rather short mining trip where I luckily found a rather nice, uh, safe, and enclosed lava room really close to one of my mining paths. Um, so I scooped up those four buckets full of it and headed right back up. And uh, it was a pretty, pretty nice run uh, for how long I was down there. Maybe five minutes. I got uh, quite a bit of goodies for that. Eight iron, four gold. So... I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, sadly, I didn't find any diamond, but I'm sure there's some down there. We'll find it soon enough. Anyway, I'm going to clean up my inventory here, and we will be right back to uh, show you how to fill this up with lava and get this melting. Alright, I am back. So, how do we get to using this awesome smeltery? Well, the first thing we have to do, obviously, is uh, take our lava buckets and just right-click the lava tank here to fill them up. You can see the lava starts to fill up. I'm going to dump, dump uh, all four of them in there, and the lava level will rise and rise until it should get full. That should be enough. I think it's four that fills it up. Either way, it's definitely going to be enough for our purposes. Yes. Awesome. So, let's take a look here in the Mighty Smelting Book to see how we get this started working with these. Um... So, like I said, what we're going to do with the, the smeltery is melt down our metals and pour them out into casts. And in here it says that the casts are made by pouring aluminum, brass, or gold into an empty casting table. Well, we don't want to do that because we want to make part casts. And it says here that the part cast can be created by pouring the metal around existing parts, like a pickaxe head. Um, so we'll need the aluminum brass. Over here on the left side, it tells you how to make some of the different alloys. Um, it shows you bronze is made from three copper and one tin. You don't actually have to use a smeltery for that. You could just take three copper ingots and one tin ingot, put that in your crafting window, and you'll be able to pull out four bronze ingots. But we do have to use the smeltery for the aluminum brass, and it shows us in here that um, it takes three aluminum and one copper to make the aluminum brass. And that's what we need to make the part casts with. So uh, some of these other alloys are rather high-end, and um, we're not going to mess with those just yet, but it does tell you how to make them. Uh, cobalt and aridite is actually a new type of metal that's found in the nether, but we're not going to worry about that just yet. Um, what we are going to worry about is the aluminum brass for making the cast. So I'm going to go grab my three aluminum and copper, and now you know why I said don't. Don't use your powered furnace or the pulverizer on that aluminum. This is why. We need that to make these blank casts. So I'm going to go grab that, and I'll be right back. All right, I'm back. Grab the uh, aluminum and the copper gravel. Now you know why I haven't done anything with the copper gravel either. As for just this reason, uh, we need to combine these into the smeltery in this proportion to, uh, to make aluminum brass. So let's drop them in here. You can see, uh, actually, that is... Not as much fuel as I thought it would be. I thought that would be like 3,000 worth. Interesting. Well, anyway, it's probably plenty for what we need here. Uh, we'll put the aluminum in. Remember, they don't stack, so we have to put them in one at a time. Just like that. And you can actually see that they do show up in there as blocks. They um, Don't put your blocks directly in there. That, that doesn't work. You have to put them in the smeltery controller. Um, and you see they're heating up... Um, each one has a little heat bar next to it, and once that heat bar gets all the way full, then uh, that texture in there will disappear once it's full, and there it goes. And that gets molted, melted, blah, blah, melted into molten aluminum, and uh, the aluminum does go a bit quicker than the copper. Each one has its own boiling melting point, if you will, um, but once the copper gets melted up uh, any second now, you will see that... Um, that it will turn into the alloy and the color will change. There it goes, turned uh, yellow. That means that it has turned into the brass. And uh, in here, the uh, sort of levels show up, and we can see that we have four ingots worth of molten aluminum brass. Awesome. Now, 
we need to um, to get the parts that we want to make casts out of, because like the uh, the book said, making part casts whoops passed it making the god making the part casts are created by pouring the metal around the existing parts. So let's figure out what we want to make here. All right, I think I've decided what I want my four casts to be. Now, uh, when we melted that down, we got f ah, four ingots worth, so that's enough for four casts. Now, one of those I definitely want to be used to make a pickaxe. Um, now, the tool rod, I'm still going to use slime for, and the tool binding, I'm probably going to use something like obsidian. So neither of those require molten metal to be poured, so I'm not going to make casts for those. I'm just going to make a cast for the pickaxe head. Um... The other thing I want, I really want a better shovel, and again, the tool rod's going to be slime, so I'll make it just a shovel cast, and that's two of the four. For the third one, I want a better sword, same deal here, the uh, the sword blade is the only one we need to make a cast for, the other uh, tool rod and the handguard are not going to be made with liquid molten stuff, so no cast for those. But, we got one left, so... I think the fourth cast, it's best to go with an ingot cast. Now, that might sound a bit strange, but the smeltery, like anything else, can be used to smelt ingots and make ingots out of it. Um, just like the pulverizer in there, it gives you a double output. So, um, if you put one iron ore in, it's going to give you two iron ingots worth, just like the pulverizer and powered furnace would. And uh, many times when you're using this, you're going to have that situation where you've got an ingot or more left in it that you don't need to use right then. And uh, you can just pour it out into an ingot cast to make an ingot out of it. And I think I'm going to demonstrate that first. So, um, you just take your ingot. Now, it doesn't have to be iron. It can be any ingot. Uh, I just grabbed an iron one. But uh, you just walk up to the casting table, right-click it, and that will set your item down. And then, with your molten metal inside, all you gotta do is just hit the uh, faucet with the right-click, and it pours out. Isn't that pretty? Wait a second, and it changes color, uh, meaning that it has dried or cooled. And then just right-click it, and boom! Pop it off, and you right-click the item, and it pops that off. Awesome, now I've got an ingot cast, material cost 1. Sweet. Again, that's going to come in very handy because if you're trying to make like an iron shovel, iron shovel has a material cost of 1, but if you put an iron ore in there, well, it's going to give you 2 ingots worth, so yeah, you'll still have a material cost of 1 left. That's what we can do with it, make just uh, an ingot. Alright, we need a place to put these casts, so let's make a, another pattern chest. This is a chest with a, one of them pattern stencil things. So, make a stencil, blank pattern. Alright, and then let's make a chest real quick. I don't know, I just think it'll look cool. You don't have to, to use that, but meh. We could just use the chest itself. Whatever. <laughs> it'll look cool. And let's just put that down right there. Drop in our ingot cast. Awesome. Okay, so, now we need to uh, make the sword blade, the pickaxe head, and the shovel head. So, uh, we just need one of them. It can be made out of anything. So, let's go into our part builder here, take the uh, pickaxe head, and just make it out of stone. Why not? It doesn't have to be made out of anything in particular. Stone will do us just fine. And let's grab that sword blade and make a stone one of them. And uh, the... Last one, let's go with the shovel. I think that will be best. Awesome. Now we'll just repeat what we did with the ingot. Take our stone shovel head, walk up to the casting table, right click, and then right click the faucet, pour that beautiful yellow metal around. Now it's cooled, pop it off, and drop it in the chest. Awesome. Now I don't know what we'll do with this extra stone stuff. I guess, I don't know, I'll pour it back. I'll dump it into a lava pit or something, I don't know. There's <laughs> no point to have them uh, uh, anymore. But, uh, there we go, sword blade. Pour that out, and, um, that should be all of our aluminum brass poured out. Sweetness. Yep, and you can see the, uh, the bottom of it is empty. No more yellow metal in there. Sweet. Let's just dump these extra things in here for now. I'll figure something to do with those later. And, uh, oh wow, now our fuel's really full. That was weird. I guess it was just a graphical glitch. 
when it only said there's 800. Yeah. Anyway, though, um, <clears throat> so now we've got our patterns, our uh, casts ready to go. So all we need to do is smelt down some more liquid molten metal, whatever we want our item to be made out of, and uh, we'll take our cast and just right-click the table, and that'll drop the uh, cast down on it. Where we have, if we have some molten metal in here, we'll just again right-click the faucet, and it will pour the molten metal out into the cast, and uh, the middle part there will dry or cool, and then we can just right-click it and to pop it off. So um, let's let's get to making these. Uh, what do I want to make these tools out of? Well, I could make them out of iron. That's a, a good choice, but uh, let's check the materials in U-Book here and see what materials I could use. Um, I could, yes, use iron. It's got a, a decent durability, and it can mine up to redstone, so uh, just like an iron pick would be able to. So that's good and all, but let's see what other more advanced stuff I might be able to get. Um, obsidian, not good durability. Uh, alamite, that's not it's too advanced. That's not good. Um, Let's see, green slime, I don't have enough of that. Nope. Huh, the uh, paper, that's a weird thing, huh? Well, no, not really. This is pretty cool. Um, it adds an extra modifier to your item, which we'll talk about modifiers here in just a bit. Uh, cobalt and iodite, that's a really advanced stuff. That's And the vanillion, that's it's even better than diamond. It uh, has a, a mining level of four. A diamond, diamond pig only has a mining level of three, so... Like I said, yeah, these are found in the nether, and nowhere near ready for making that stuff with. Now, we could make bronze. Bronze has got a good durability. That's even a bit better than an iron pick. Huh. Or we could make it out of steel. Oh, that looks good. That's got a mining level of four. But how the heck do we make steel? Obtaining this is unknown. Hmm. And it'll even give me us a, a reinforced level two instead of the reinforced level one that iron or bronze would. But how do we make steel? That's probably a pretty advanced thing, isn't it, Sukasa? Yes, it is. But there's a way around that. Normally, you would need a a thing called a blast furnace. And the blast furnace is kind of like the smeltery here. It's a multi-block structure that you can build to um to smelt iron into steel. Now, we are nowhere near ready for doing that because it requires a few items from the Nether. But Tinker's Construct adds a little way around that. So let's um, pull up NEI here and type in steel. Now, there are, if you notice, a steel ingot here and there's a steel ingot here. This one here is a little bit darker in color. I believe this one is the one from Tinker's Construct, whereas the lighter colored one is the steel ingot from Railcraft. And the one from Railcraft is the one that requires the blast furnace. This one doesn't. How do we make that then? Let's push R, and we will see that we can smelt the steel dust to get steel ingots. Okay, now how do we make steel dust? Aha! An iron ingot surrounded by coal. Nice. We can definitely pull that off at this stage of the game. So, I'm going to grab me some coal and some iron, and I'll be right back. Okay, I am back. I've got my iron ingots here and some coal. I am about out of coal, but I've got enough for this. Let's make two steel dusts, and then we will just drop that into our uh, powered furnace here, and hopefully we've got enough juice left in that buffer to do this. I believe so. And that will smelt us out some steel ingots. Awesome! And yeah, we do have enough. Sweet. So, if we take our steel ingots and we drop that into the smeltery... Dun -da -da -da. Now again, you don't have to use raw materials. Um, I use the iron, uh, rather, sorry, the uh, the aluminum ore itself, because if I were to put aluminum in a powered furnace, it would only give me a single output yield. I would get one chunk of raw aluminum. But if I put that aluminum in the smeltery, it gives me two ingots worth. So effectively, it doubles it. Um, that's just a, a cork with uh, aluminum. Um, I could use any sort of ingot in here, uh, and it will give me an ingot's worth out of it. So um, we're going to do that right now. Let's drop in uh, three of these, one for our shovel, pickaxe, and sword, and I'll just have an extra one. 
Da -da -da. Look at that. Beautiful. Looks almost like a stone slab, actually. Looks kind of like a smooth stone slab. But that is a chunk of steel that is melting. That's going to take a while because it is uh, it's a pretty heat resistant substance. So I'll be right back. Alright, I am back and we've got a pool of molten steel. Heck yeah. That's awesome. Now, let's just grab our pattern uh, casts here. Each one there. And uh, let's put our pickaxe head down there. Just right click it. And then we will pour out. Um, we will pour out. What? Three, um, right click. There it goes. Okay, that was weird. I don't know what the hell happened there. Okay, yes, and it is hardened into our steel pickaxe head. Sweet. And let's get the sword blade. Nice, that is so pretty. And then the shovel head. Okay, sweet. So we've got one of each in here. Our steel sword blade, a steel shovel head, and a steel pickaxe head. Now we just have to combine them like we did earlier with the stone ones to get our full item. Um, let's see what we have in here. Okay, good. I've got some of this left. There's one slime rod, and uh, that will make two more. Let's get these slime rods going. Put the slime crystal in there. Let's give me three in this chunk. Give me there we go. Three of them. Sweet. Now, let's get this shovel. Oh yeah. Look at that durability. 1125. This one here has 196. That is a huge upgrade. Oh my gosh. And um, its speed is 8. That is really, really fast. I think 10 is what a diamond would be. I, I think. Uh, I know 6 is what iron is. So it's better than, significantly better than iron. So heck yeah, and it has the reinforced tooth freight due to it being made out of steel. So let's call this uh, steel shovel. So B E L, hell yeah, that's awesome. Now, um, what do we want to make that handguard out of? Hmm. Let me think about that. I'll be right back. Alright, I'm back. I did quite a bit of thinking on what I want these other pieces to be made out of. Um, so we need to make the tool binding out of something. Um, and I don't want to use the same material for it because, like I've said before, the, uh, the tool rod is what has the durability modifier on it to increase the tool's durability, which is why it's best to make the tool rod out of the highest durability best thing you have. In our case, right now, it's the slime crystal. The tool binding, however, does not add durability to it. The tool binding instead adds a trait based on the material you use. So I was looking at the different materials, and uh, also that goes the same with uh, the sword, the, the wide guard, the hand guard, what have you, works the same way as that tool binding. So um, I was looking in here at the different materials I could make it out of to get its material ability. Um, there's the reinforced, which is 10% per chance of not using durability, which is freaking awesome. Um, iron has reinforced one by itself. And uh, I was thinking about using obsidian because obsidian has a reinforced level 3. So that's a 30% chance every time I use it of not using durability. That's freaking awesome. But after thinking about that more, I don't have an iron pick. I don't have a way to pick that up, so I don't have any of that on hand. Um, I could probably find a way around that, but... I got to thinking about it, and since I made this thing out of uh, steel anyway, it's already got a reinforced level 2. So I'm thinking instead, what I'm going to use here is paper to give it uh, the writable ability, which adds another modifier to it. So that'll give me four modifiers instead of just three. So, like I said, we'll talk about modifiers here real soon, um, but needless to say those are going to be awesome so I'm going to make the uh, the tool binding out of paper literally I made some paper out of the uh, the sugar reeds and I'll just put that in there and it gives me a paper binding it sounds ridiculous but it's going to be awesome <laughs> and I'll also make the hand guard out of paper sweet now we'll just combine that with our uh, steel pickaxe head 
our slime rod and the uh, paper binding. And that gives us a writable reinforced 2 pickaxe with 1125 durability. If I were to make this out of iron, it would only be 325. So that is freaking amazing. And a mining speed of 8 versus uh, 6 with iron. Also, the mining level of iron is redstone. This one is cobalt. So I can pick up obsidian with it, and I'll be able to pick up the cobalt ores in the nether. Uh, that is something you can't even do with a diamond pick. So this is really going to be awesome. Let's call it our uh, steel uh, steel su uh, pick. Yes, awesome. Hell yeah. Now the sword. Let's make a long sword. So long sword. Sweet. And the paper hand guard and the slime rod, and that gives us the writable reinforced two long sword with four modifiers instead of three. Again, this does. Um, three and a half hearts, a, uh, a sword made of iron does three, so that's pretty sweet. And now we will be able to upgrade these things uh, with four different traits on each one, well except for the shovel, it only gets three, but I'm not concerned about that in the least. Um, so the different modifiers you could put on here is found in the, uh, the red book, the Materials New Volume 2, and uh, let's talk about that a little bit in the next episode. I think we're running low on time here, so I'm going to end the episode here. There's a lot to cover uh, about modifiers and upgrading your items, so uh, I'll do a whole episode on that, so stay tuned for it. Uh, I hope you did enjoy, though. Maybe you learned something. If so, don't forget to thumbs up. Subscribe for more. Until next time, this is Sukasa signing out. I hope you all have a good one.